how much training data is left, Ali, in the world that hasn't been scraped, open, crawled, et cetera, or licensed now because we're entering this age of licensing where Reddit, Quora, building really nice businesses. Obviously, Elon bought Twitter in order to have proprietary training data, and that's why Grok is so good at real-time queries. Is there any data left, and how are these large language models or verticalized models creating data? And it's a bit of a softball question since this is what Micro One does for a living. Yeah, so so there is there is no data left. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a the internet has obviously been been trained on, and I think there's a large scale kind of equivalent data sets that that have similar quality. So training on them actually doesn't really meaningfully improve models. So you know the way we look at it is we're in the phase of post training where net new data is required, and that net new data is created by humans, oftentimes human experts and subject matter experts in specific domains that are creating very complex, high fidelity data sets to continue improving model capabilities. And I think the route that you know foundational models uh, companies are, are taking is they're trying to improve in, in the highest economically valuable domains, and they try to improve in, in with data structures that are emergent, which means, uh, you know, improving not only in that domain, but also improving the model generally. So, um, yeah. Give, give some examples of the top, you know, high value verticals. Obviously, people have watched, we have an investment in a company called Tax GPT that's doing tax <laughs> law mm -hmm. specifically, which is granular, which is detailed, which you need expertise in, which is always changing. Obviously, tax laws change every day globally in you know hundreds of markets and thousands of different little niches so i'm assuming accounting and legal are obvious ones in there but and maybe coding what else is in this list what what are your clients asking for generally speaking yeah the, the three main categories are finance medical and legal and coding you know is a, is a very close fourth those are the ones that we sort of focus on based on the demand that we that we see I think that the, the current state of the market uh, is very, very much still in this phase of getting the models to be really good at question and answer pairs, like really complex questions and very complex domains. Uh, but we're now starting to enter the phase of models actually doing things in those domains. And I think tax is actually a really good example. If you, if you think about like a, you know, what is a question answer pair in tax? It, it may be, at, you know, giving your income of the year and then asking for tax advice on like, you know, purchases you can make before end of year. And the models do, I think, a pretty good job at, at answering these singular questions. But where, where models fail at very much so currently is uh, when they have to answer sort of like multiple questions in a row, which is equivalent to saying they have to sort of do things. And the, the, the simplest way to think about this is if you assume that there's any given domain that has, let's say, 90% accuracy in answering any given question, uh, any arbitrary question, if you if you take that and you have to answer multiple in a row, let's say five questions in a row to actually do some actions, and you do 0.9 to the power of five, you're going to very quickly kind of go to zero, right? The accuracy is going to compound, uh, converge towards zero very quickly, which is why training data for tasks that have these sequential actions is is much harder. So one of the environments that actually we're we're creating is is a is a tax environment specifically for California W two taxes. And as you can imagine, there's lots of you know steps to filing someone's taxes, such as collecting input data from them first, making sure you actually have the right input data. There's some partial rewards for that. And then there's a conversation that happens around tax advice and a bunch of steps in between. And then ultimately the taxes filed. And each of those steps, you know, they, they depend on each of the previous states and the previous states need to be accurate for the, you know, for the following states to be accurate as well. If you're not listening to your customers and iterating based on their feedback, your startup will fail. So if you're drowning in feedback from support, reviews, calls, it's time for an interpret. Interpret is the customer intelligence platform that helps you turn random comments and feedback into actionable insights that help grow your company. Their AI system is already trained on your business and your product. It then reads all your support tickets. It reads all your reviews, calls transcripts and surveys. Then their agents actually update your team in Jira, Linear, Zendesk, and Slack. So this feedback doesn't just sit in some email or messaging thread, but it actually helps keep your team moving the ball forward. Find out why Canva, Notion, and Perplexity are already using Interpret to stay on top of what they need to fix or build next. So if you're ready to turn feedback chaos into customer intelligence, head to interpret.com slash twist to book a demo and see it in action. That's E-N-T- 
E-R-P-R-E-T dot com slash twist.